is 33 with nine years on tour. He is 34 with 12 years experience. He is 22 and one of the rising stars on tour. He won his first major at the age of 19. Will experience went out of her youth. Find out next at the main event PBA Tour Finals. Orlando Flores, host of four of the top bowlers in the world, competing for a PBA Tour title. We bring you the stepladder semifinals for Group 1 of the first ever PBA Tour Finals from the Main Event Entertainment Center. Here are the standings for Group 1 after round-robin match play. Sweden's Jesper Svensson tore through four games, earning the top seed, followed by Sean Rash, Jason Belmonte, and Anthony Simonson. Each bowler earned 50 bonus pins for each match won in round-robin match play. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Orlando, the city beautiful. So great to have you with us, Dave Ryan, alongside Randy Peterson, PBA Hall of Famer. We've got a star-studded field again, partner here today, led by Jesper Svensson. Yeah, we really do. We're back to the stepladder finals with a little bit of a twist. The final game is going to be a two-game total pinfall match. But I'll tell you what, the guy to beat is Jesper Svensson. I know he's the number one seed, but what he did over the last two telecasts was simply amazing. He went back-to-back -back games of 268 followed that up with 279 and oh by the way he just averaged 259 for the four games maybe in a one game match you can get him I don't think you can get Jesper Spenson in a two game match I think he wins today he has been fantastic no question let's meet our four bowlers now with our master of ceremonies Dennis McCamory Thanks, Dave. Let's meet our four players in the Group 1 Step Ladder Finals. The youngest ever to win a PBA Tour Major from Austin, Texas, Anthony Simonson. His first opponent, winner of two majors earlier this year, from New South Wales, Australia, Jason Belmonte. The winner of that match faces Tour title is from Montgomery, Illinois, Sean Rash. And the winner of that match faces a Gothenburg, Sweden native with six PBA Tour titles, Jesper Svensson. <laughs> to see who advances to the championship match of the main event, PBA Tour Finals. All right, Dennis, we are ready to bowl. Here in Orlando, step ladder bowling today. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson in the booth here in Orlando. Simonson and Belmonte, match number one. Higher seed gets choice of starting lane and finishing position. That would be Jason Belmonte. And it looks like Simonson will sit while Jason Belmonte starts on the left lane. Jason will finish the match on the right lane. Belmont will enter this event here in Orlando as the top overall seed of the eight bowlers invited invitation only to this fantastic PBA Tour event based on earnings from 2015 until now. Belmo gets us started with the strike. And what's interesting is I spoke to him before we went on the air and I asked him if he was still going to use urethane today and he said absolutely. Well that wasn't urethane that was reactive resin he started with. So maybe not. <laughs> was he? He was lying to me. He would never do that. No, he wouldn't. He saw something obviously that changed uh, throughout practice, and he's going with reactive. Yeah, youngster Simonson, only 20 years old from Austin. Oh, stone nine out of the gate for Anthony Simonson. the event two and five all time on TV 208 average six appearances takes care of the nine pin and has his mark early just underway here more on Simonson Randy well, a little different two handed style he's a little bit more square his rev rates not near as high as Jason Belmonte's but he still uses two hands and no thumb and you can see that kind of hop right there in the pivot step and real low to the foul line. He 
Comes up and out of it just a little bit to try to create a little bit of ball speed. Simonson's average for the four games, 222. Oh man, solid nine, solid, solid seven to start. Schroeder with seven only. Almost in the fourth arrow, and this is game one. Creating a lot of angle through the front part of the lane, and then that back end reaction. Gonna reset on the seven pin. We'll tell you about from hoops to hockey, the diamond of the gridiron. Morning's most outrageous team has you covered. Don't miss Boomer and Carton presented by Gillette Pro Shield. Weekday morning, 6 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Simonson waits for the seven pin. Let's talk about the lanes here and conditions these great bowlers will face here. Well, it's a 42 foot oil pattern created just for this event. Both lanes done identical and the lanes are perfectly symmetrical left to right. But it does create multiple angles. We've seen players go straight. We've seen them hook it. Urethane is in play. Everybody's got a shot and an angle to the pocket on this oil pattern. We've seen some big scores, 299 from E.J. Tackett, and of course what we talked about Jesper Svensson doing at the top of the show. Anthony takes care of the seven pin, single pin, Spare conversion, no problem after the slight delay. <clears throat> Step ladder bowling here today, match number one. Sean Rash and the top seed, Jesper Svensson. A weight up the ladder. Svensson will have a two game total pinfall match with his challenger at the top of the ladder. That determines the game. one winner. Belmo looking good. All 10 down, punching him back into the pit. Well, this is pretty much the style that started the craze with the two handed style. That big step to the left, he gets his hips and rear end out of the way so he can swing the ball up underneath his body. It's just an amazing position the players get in today. Some of the players do it with their thumb in it, like EJ Tackett. Jason does it with the two-handed style. Interesting when you talk to him about how he works on shaping the ball differently. You know, you mentioned it, I think it was uh, last week's show where you know, he goes into the center late at night, turns the music on, and then he just literally works on different shapes and he creates those shapes with his hand what his hand does when it lets go of the bowling ball ball speed you know how many revolutions he's creating and he works for hours on just creating different shapes and that's what makes and breaks you out here on the PBA tour can you shape it if you can you've got a chance to win numbers for Simonson a round robin play you saw that as the four seed entering Group one step ladder play here today. Well, Velmo is shaping well here early, Randy, with three quick strikes against the youngster. So I know you talked with a lot of the players before our show here today. What's the feeling you got from them? First ever time PBA Tour history having round robin match play with eight players in the format on TV. Well, they've got it, it's got a, a major championship feel to it as you take a look at Anthony's. Arsenal, no rules, Pearl, he's going with. High plus strike. You like that one, Tommy? Ah. <laughs> he didn't like it, and every time he doesn't like it, it strikes. Talking to Tommy Jones there, PBA star watching in the wings. Tommy's over there mingling with a couple of web.com web players, uh, some professional golfers that have come in from Orlando, uh, or just down the road to Dr. Phillips, a couple of friends of mine that. Uh, Tommy is uh, probably trying to get some tips from. 
Tommy could offer the bowling tips. They could offer the golf tips. I like it. Something distracted, Jason. You got Andy Pope and Joe Heimel sitting over there with Tommy Jones and two great golfers here in the Orlando area. Tommy Jones, an avid golfer himself. Big step to the left right here. Clear the hips. In the bang. front four here, Randy for Bomo. You better believe it. He's in a groove. Beautiful. You know, in getting back to his equipment choice, he said, Randy, I'm having trouble controlling the down lane reaction when I throw reactive. Uh, apparently not the case today. Beautiful shot. That would have knocked 30 down. Uh, easily. Great lane level look from our crew here in Orlando. Going with phase two. To the front five. Left lane, been red hot. Span the lead to 31. Oh, yeah. Feeling it. Jason Belmonte. Entering the PBA Tour Finals second 2017 earnings list is Belmo. Simon's in number three. There's over $56,000. In terms of average, Belmo number one, Simon's in sixth best. Entering this PBA Tour event. 227 plus for Anthony. The youngster's got all 10 down. You know, he could easily have the front five as well. He went solid nine and then solid seven behind it and follows it up with a nice three-bagger. Now, Randy, you've been around Anthony a lot. 19 years old, 39 days, youngest ever to win a major championship at the 2016 Masters. What advice do you have for a young guy like that? Just getting started, wins a major at such a young age. I mean, if it's not if it's not broke, don't fix it. I mean, he's he's very mature for his age, and he knows how to bowl. But he also knows how to handle pressure, and that's the unusual part about uh, it. When you're that young, you're not supposed to know how to do that. And Anthony Simonson knows how to do that. High shot, seven pin count, three six ten up here for Simonson. You know, out of out of the eight players in this great event. He's the one player that has not looked comfortable throughout. That's got to change in this match with Jason Belmonte, who so far is perfect through five frames. More bowling from Orlando next. Players bowling fans certainly have enjoyed the main event entertainment center here in Orlando. It's Belmonte, the front five, has a nice lead. Randy has got more on Belmo with today's Track Tech Talk. Yeah, we've already spoken a little bit about it, but there's that two-handed style, how he loads it up. No thumb, cupping it. Now watch the approach. Big left right here. Hits shift out of the way so he can get that swing up underneath that shoulder. Also helps him to project the ball to the right. Master technician and everyone at this level. Eight best bowlers in this event on Orlando. Got to know the game so well. Technically, which adjustments to make at which times. Belmo tries for the front six. Got away with one. He looks way home. He looks hyper focused right now too. Excuse me, Dave. Can I get a re rack? Pass here for a re rack. This one pushes a little bit farther down the lane before it starts to make the left turn. Watch this. You see the streak in the blue oil there. It's beautiful to watch, but a lot farther to the right, and that could have been just speed. Perfect through six, and a 34-pin lead for Belmonte. Long trip from Australia, 30 hours of travel to get here. Halfway around the world for Belmo. And he does look locked in today. 
Looks for the front seven. Carry. It does carry, Belmo. Seven down, five to go. Right now, Simonson's thinking to himself, I have to strike out to have any chance. Just doesn't look comfortable. Shots that actually end up dead flush, he turns his head and disgust, and, and then they strike. And you rarely see Simonson go through any of that. The winner of this match will take on Sean Rash. Uh, keep using this. Keep using this. 44 pins down. The trouble mounts here for Simonson. Now see this shot here, I think he likes and it just labors. That's for Jesper Svensson. Head to head with Rash. Been able to come through, lost to Belmo as well in the round robin play. And Sean Rash knocked him off 224, 195 at the end of round robin play here in Orlando. Belmonte looks for the front eight. There is a $10,000 prize that will be divided among the eight bowlers. Every time we get a 300 game. In a hurry it does. Look at that ball reaction down lane into the one three pocket. He was a little bit softer with that shot, and it read better. Right now, he is executing at an extremely high level. So if Belmo gets 300 game, that's his $10,000. If anyone else gets it, they divide between the 300 game throwers. Not all eight, I was mistaken. Correct yeah, that? Yeah, it's a, it's a $10,000 pool, or a pot, if you will. If you roll 300 game, you're in. Right. And if you're the only one, you take home all 10 grand. That sounds pretty good. How about the front nine here? No. Wow, Ooh. right through the nose and a really tough split. Uh, it was left the whole way out of his hand. Three, four, six, seven, ten up. Telly. Over here, throw the three into the four, seven. Converts. Kind of how I drew it up. What a great cover on the big split he by Jason. Subject, Randy of the Hammer Tup Spare Replay. Interesting they, that Jason shoots that split from the right side of the lane, not from the left side. While we're watching that hammer tough spare replay, Simonson does strike. Belmo is set to advance. Up the ladder. Well, it's been a tough go for young Simonson here at the main event in Orlando. told us before the competition started that he really did feel good about his game. He was practicing just enough, he thought, felt comfortable physically, mentally, emotionally going in, but it's a buzzsaw when you're facing seven of the world's best in a very tough competition. Yeah, he just, just never looked comfortable. I've never seen him this frustrated. So Belmonte will advance up the stepladder. Sean Rash is next. Group one step ladder play to determine the group one finalists. Belmo through for the next round. 262, 215, a win for Jason Belmonte, head to head with Anthony Simons in the front eight. Flutter with a 300 game, impressive victory. Sean Rash next up for Jason Belmonte. Step ladder. Event here in Orlando, 2012 Player of the Year. Hoping to bowl well against one of the world's best. Well, it's safe to say there's no love lost between Jason Belmonte and Sean Rash. Also a good bet that the rivals and fierce competitors have a mutual respect 
for one another's game. Here's today's Ebonite flashback. They have been linked together since a misunderstanding on the lanes a few years ago. But Jason Belmonte and Sean Rash have been two of the PBA's best over the last couple of years. To win one USBC Masters title is an accomplishment in itself, but to win four, well, that puts you in a league all by yourself. Jason Belmonte did just that this year, winning the 2017 Masters title with a 279-212 win over amateur Michael Tang. Belmo opened up the championship match with seven consecutive strikes and never gave Tang a chance. With a win, Jason earned his eighth major title, tying him for third in the all-time list with Hall of Famers Mike Alby and Walter Ray Williams Jr. For Sean Rash, winning his 11th title on tour didn't come as easy, but it was fulfilling in the 2016 Detroit Open. He defeated the reigning player of the year, Jason Belmonte, running out a tough 178-161 victory on the unforgiving bear pattern. With shot making, filling frames makes the difference between winning and losing. Winning two matches that day. First against Wes Mallott, and then against Jason Belmonte in front of the crowd at the Thunder Bowl in Detroit, earning Sean the championship. Since 2015, Randy Belmonte Rash, two of the best. Yeah, former, two former players of the year, and uh, I'll tell you what, they've had some great battles on the lanes, and some great matches. Belmonte, the number one seed entering this event. John Rash, number eight, but now they're going head to head. Step ladder, trying to climb the ladder and get to the top seed, Jesper Svensson. It's Belmonte Rash next. Main Event Entertainment Center, Orlando. Boy, it's been fun, Randy, for all the players and I, the broadcasters I, and the fans. I love it when you play that crane game. Tommy Jones, Anthony Simonson. Get it done on the motorcycle track there. Jeremy Carter is here, Senior Promotions Manager for the Main Event Entertainment Center. Right next to the PBA Tour Commissioner, Tom Clark. Great to see Tom. Special thanks to Jeremy, her staff here in Orlando. Been a lot of fun. Cool place. Oh, it's beautiful here. I don't know what's more entertaining, you in the crane game or Tom on, on that whack-a-mo game. I never win anything, so it's probably me. <laughs> I keep trying though. You had a uh, you had a, a, a handful of stuffed animals the other day. <laughs> Taking them home to the kids. Come Little on. kids love them. And I tell you what, the four, five, and seven year old will always love a stuffed animal. Doesn't matter what it is. Belmonte Rash underway. Ooh. Strike for Belmo. Belmo creating some big big angle here in game two. Match number two. Sean Rash. He's going to go much straighter, take my word for it, right around second arrow. All right, Randy, I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Well-documented rivals. Yeah. What's this relationship like between these two guys now? There isn't one. Enough said. Sean Rash. Going right at it. One-three pocket, all ten down. Rash averaging 228. But he captured three wins, which gave him an extra 150 pins and got him into the second seed. Beat Belmonte game one around Robin play, 237, 215, plus the 50 pins you mentioned. Lost to Svensson. Then beat Simonson, 224, 195, plus 50. Here he is as the number two seed, group one. It's an approach, right? Wow. Nice result. Much, much straighter. Sean changed his game uh, a, a while ago, added a, an extra step. Worked on his hand. Big backswing. He's always had that great cup wrist, but much, much straighter. Down and in for Sean Rash and the big hook for Belmonte. Two completely different lines to the pocket. Got a hurry. That one came back from Lake Nona. Just enough. Take that one. He will take it. Great 
looked like that. Now the thought process changes about the move he's got to make on that right lane. 262-215 winner in match number one against Simonson. But, you know, I got to tell you, Sean Rash's bar reaction is much more manageable for me. Because? It's way less angle. It's just down and in. Th this angle that Belmonte's playing, if he's not careful, can create a disastrous split like it did last game. With a move left. But this time left lane, he's perfect. A great shot. A little crazy though with that ball speed and angle. And it's gonna be a real ugly design for Belmonte. Rash, I like the down and in for him. He can soften his hand up enough, keep his line in front of him. 237 winner, 224, 234 winners. Big backswing. Right at it. All 10 down. Watching the 1-3 pocket for Sean Rash. Well, you and I call this first ever win in Parkersburg, West Virginia back in 2006. And his last win in Detroit on the PBA Tour fall swing. Was He's had a great career. Was it that long ago? 2006. 11 years ago, man. Using an edge solid. And when you look at the number of the hook potential, that I would call that a medium reactive. His Fanatic BTU, that would be a urethane, I'm guessing a urethane ball. Something got him. Weekdays at 3 Eastern, former All-Pro Tiki Barber and co-host Brandon Tierney bring their sports expertise in Red Hot Radio takes the television. Catch Tiki and Tierney right here in the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Oh, Rash tries God. to keep this perfect game going. No, four pin. I was high, didn't like it on the release. Something caught him and distracted him. Not sure what it is. I can't see it, but he got that one in and went high and only leaving the four pin, which is okay, but but it caught him twice. It's a practice pair of lanes to the right. You know, the bowlers here in the TV pair. Might have been something distracting him there, possibly. So Belma looks for the front four, trying to stay perfect. And the front eight in his win. The first match today. Ten pin no. will stand. And I think that's I think that's the iffy lane for uh, Jason. And he's gonna have to finish the match on this lane. The revolutions and the rotation. It's just scary. Ted Pitt, no problem. Single pin spare conversion for Jason Belmonte. Kirk, can I get a re rack, please? Ask Kirk Von Kruger for a re rack. Gives us time to tell you about this. PBA's Extra Frame is your home for exclusive live coverage of the PBA, PBA 50, and PWBA tours. This week, Extra Frame features live coverage of a PBA 50 tour major, the Suncoast PBA Senior U.S. Open from Las Vegas. And this weekend, it's live coverage of the PWBA Greater Detroit Open. Check out all the action by clicking on the Extra Frame link in the menu section of PBA.com. Sign up for a yearly, monthly, or three-day subscription. Ball ready to go off the re rack. All 10 down. Just goes through the pin so I hard. Just it's it at the bottom. Just, a, just enough. Just it, enough. As Jason comes back and talks to his tour rep, Timmy Mack, standing back there in the black shirt. All 
all even. Rash in the fifth frame. In again. Whoa. Yeah. Got it left again. Camera. Right now, Sean's attention is elsewhere. Camera got him. Some distraction to the to the right of the television pair. And it, you know, once that starts, every little thing is going to catch your attention. <laughs> this is a, the Greek church or grandma's teeth, as we used to call it back in the day. Four, six, seven, nine, ten. How about John? Nope. Four, seven will stand. Let's see. Very devastating open frame with the way this match is going head to head with Belmonte suddenly down by 17 pins. You see uh. the, the, the eyes start looking everywhere but what's in front of you and that oh, well. Come on. that creates a distraction. And it creates uh, well it puts things in your head you don't you don't really want to have happen. That's a better shot. John Rash will talk things over. PBA Tour staff trying to overcome distractions and overcome Jason Belmonte, which will not be easy. Belmo has a lead on Sean Rash in Orlando. Jason Belmonte has a 17 pin lead. Works on the strike here, heading into the sixth frame. Can expand that to 27. Group one semifinals, second match in the first. Belmo beat Anthony Simonson. 262-215 after rolling the front eight. So Belmo in the driver's seat here. Sean Rash. A little distracted, unfortunately for him, in that earlier part of this game. Let's see if he can overcome that. And rally against one of the all-time greats in Belmo. Will be easy on that right lane, a strike for Belmonte. That's big shot there on the tricky lane for Belmo and and a big double off of the spare in the fourth. And nice pit action. This is the one he wants though. This is his good lane. He knows exactly what it's going to do. All it is now is execution. to the turkey seventh frame you bet lead expands again fist pump for good reason 37 pins up now on sean rash yeah well, that's taking advantage of the opening you know sean's just he was distracted by something it's, it's not making this up folks something got him now from our vantage point it's almost impossible for dave and i to tell what that is Seventh frame cuts into the lead and has a double. Good shot. So, so folks, it's an automated still camera at the foul line that was clicking in the middle of Sean's approach. There it is right there, and that's what got him. It is now turned off. Very unfortunate. Right there at the foul line. So unfortunately for Sean, it cost him. Max score 252. So Turkey eight frame, 17. Right there, all 10 back. It's not over. He's making a game of it. It's not over. But Bel Belmonte can make it uh, be over with a strike here in the eighth and ninth. He's going to 279 clip. Two more strikes here will all but shut out Sean Rash. It's for the four bagger, back up by 27. A single pin a spare conversion coming up. Ten stands for Belmo. Now yeah, it's a good shot, but that lane wiggles. When he gets it a little bit to the right, you can see it right there. It just doesn't come off the spot 
as hard as it does on the left lane, and that's the risk, that little soft 10 pin. Now, with a spare here, his max score is now 258. Still anybody's game. Well, Tolos, he has worked on his bag of tricks in practice, those late night sessions back home in New South Wales, Australia. 11 o'clock at night, bowling right, center's all closed down. Right. Turns lights on, turns the power to the lanes on, and cranks tunes, and continues to work on his game and create new looks. If I may be a little analytical here, I'd like to just point something out. Jason Belmonte has to finish the match on the right lane. He's just coming off of a soft 10. A player, when they get back to that same lane, that same situation, starts to think about how to manipulate it to get the ball to come around the corner and not leave the soft 10. He needs to be careful. That's if Sean Rash can strike out and force him to get up in the 10th and perform. So he to refer to that bag of tricks warning on that right lane. Left lane here, all 10 down for Belmont. It's all up to Rash now. He's got to strike out and force Belmonte to double. Look how deep he is. He's already into the 26th board. Third arrow on the left. It's all Sean Rash now, though. Four straight. Foundation frame. Huge shot for Rash. Seven pin. Seven stands. Unbelievably bad break for Sean Rash on a good shot. Let's take a look at the pin action here, folks. He'll carry that nine out of ten times, I guarantee you. And now Sean Rash's day is all but done. He can strike out for 231 and would force Belmonte to get a mark on the tricky right lane. And Sean talked to us pre-event about trying to take advantage of all opportunities. You just can't miss your chances when they're there. And today, unfortunately, unable to overcome that distraction. Cost him dearly. All 10 down there, but Belmo in good shape to close awesome. him out. Sean Rash said it was still a fire and passion to win on the PBA Tour. Clearly his game is up to snuff. Shot to finish it up, awesome. and Jason Belmonte will Good move shot, up the shot. ladder. Jasper Stinson awaiting as a top seed. Step ladder, move one. Semifinals. Group one winner takes on the group two winner in the championship show from here in Orlando. PBA title on the line. Went to a different ball and <laughs> shaped a little bit stronger down lane. He may go with two different balls in the title match with Jesper Svensson. Or the final match, I should say. Strong bowling for the two-hander from down under. Jason Belmonte, our top seed. Outstanding again. Second appearance overall on TV in 2017. Ninth year pro out of New South Wales. He'll take on Jesper Svensson, match number three. 
trying to win group one make the championship show two arch rivals quick handshake that's it Belmonte advances beat Sean Rash Svensson awaits Belmo and Randy awaits Svensson Lane level here from Jesper. Sweetest sensation when we return to Orlando, Florida. Jason Belmonte knocks off Sean Rash. Step ladder bowling here in Orlando, 255, 221. So now Belmo takes on Jesper's fence and Randy with Jesper now. Thanks, Dave. With me, the guy that's just been on fire in this event, Jesper Svensson. We talked about it at the top of the show where you averaged 259 for your four games. How do you accomplish that? Um, you know, just find a good way to, to strike a lot. And I got my hand to do the right thing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. How's your bar reaction look today? Um, it looks OK, I think. Uh, it's, it's up to me now to, to keep throwing the ball good. And I know it's going to take a lot of strikes to beat Jason. So, you know, I'm going to try my best. And, and you're okay with me uh, and, and the nickname that I gave you uh, throughout this competition, the Iceman. You're okay with that? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool. I just hope I can, I can uh, make it happen. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Thanks. Hey, Dave, the Iceman cometh. He's ready, isn't he? Group one championship to be determined to make the championship show from Orlando. Coming up next, Belmonte Svensson. We are ready in Orlando to determine Randy Peterson, a Group 1 winner. Two games, total pinfall. Spenson Belmonte should be fun to watch. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. If you're a bowling fan, this is what you dream of. Two of the most exciting players on the PBA Tour are going at it. Starting with Simonson, Belmonte, Rash, and Jesper Spenson. And here we are, down to the last two. Every pin matters. Good start for the two-handed southpaw. Two-game total pinfall will determine the winner here in group one. That winner will move on to bowl for the title here at main event. The PBA Tour Finals. Belmonte's first two games, 262, 255. And we talk about the oil pattern, Dave, and you've got a lefty and a righty, and two players that are going to play the lanes completely different. Jesper is going to throw urethane real straight, and Belmonte is going to continue to hook the entire lane. <clears throat> Less traffic on the left side of the lane. Six games on the right side with extremely high rev players. Belmonte continues just to move left and create more angle. Starts deep. Finds a one three pocket, no problem. Comfortable, confident, smooth. That's the way Belmo looks right now. Future of the PBA Tour right here. Yes, for only 22 years old, his fourth year on the PBA Tour. Already six titles and a major. with Kyle Troop in Maine, a doubles title. Wow. Sauce through the rack. Just dirty. The Iceman, so cool. Just never looks like he gets too amped. You just wonder what's going on in, in that head and how jacked he really is, but he sure doesn't show it on the outside. Well, in your interview with him, that's pretty demonstrative, I think, of his personality. He is low key. He's quiet, soft spoken. English, of course, is second language. Does very well with that. He's a pretty chill dude. Third frame tries to stay perfect. 
Oh, a little help across the deck there, but the seven pin stands. Two thousand fifteen PBA Tour Rookie of the Year. His five singles titles have come on international soil. Takes care of the seven pin. Nine great career, Jason Belmonte. Fourteen titles, and eight majors. Remarkable, right lane. All ten down. Jason has a very different take on being considered the best in the world. Let's listen in. I would hope people out there don't want to be like me. I hope they want to be better than me. I really encourage people to not use me as the limit. And, and go beyond whatever I'm able to achieve and strive for that. And I think that's a, a really great message and it's something that I'm going to start living by, by the people that I look up to and aspire to. I don't want to be like them. I want to be better than them. And I think if we all were better than those that we looked up to, we'd be in, an, in a much better world. That's great advice and great insight by arguably the greatest, the best player on tour Harry. today. Good yes. carry for Belmo. He's pumped. Off to a great start. Has the front four. And you can see just how far left he is, and soon he's going to start lofting it. He's sliding in the left gutter cap and just left of third arrow on the left. Probably the 26th, 27th board. Benson, only non-strike of the match so far between these two. And with that incredible ball speed, just crushes the rack back into the pit. Two-handed on the left side, but very unusual. He's much straighter and much more square to the foul line with his feet spread apart. You can see his hips don't open near as much going to the foul line as Belmonte's. And that's what enables him to go straighter. Unique approach where the feet spread apart into the pivot step as you take a look at his arsenal pitch black going with urethane. The framework turns dry. Wow. <laughs> to see the pin reaction, how quickly those pins go back. To the wall is phenomenal. Well, They've got no chance, Randy. They've got no chance to stand. Yeah, no, it, it a lot of ball speed and a super high rev rate. His rev rate might be higher than Belmonte's, and that's saying something because uh Belmonte can certainly bring the power, but I think Jesper Svensson may have a higher rev rate. Two of the world's best power players, to be sure. Belmont looks for the front five. Looks away. Didn't like it. Crossing over. Almost got a Brooklyn strike out of it. And yeah. Has issues on the right lane. Bad shot. Got it inside a target. Once he gets it inside a target with that amount of power, there's no way that ball's going to hold its line. I don't know if he caught the bar return going by it or not. Pin and has his spare. And we've got ourselves a match. This is a two game total pinfall match. Can I take a rerack, group please, one winner. And Belmont will take a re rack here and think things over. He likes to use the re rack. Did you? Absolutely. 
you know, I used it when the pins just didn't look right to me, and then sometimes I used it when I needed a, a, a real quick timeout. Some players use it, use it to ice other players. Some use, some use it just to chill. You know, against uh, Sean Rash in our last match, he used both re-racks. Players are allowed two re-racks a game. Interesting that Jason Belmonte's laydown area and Jesper's are now in the same spot. Righty lefty. <laughs> He's amazing. And a hurry it does into the one three pocket, all 10 down. So Belmont uses that re rack. Off his near Brooklyn strike to regroup. Great match. Group one winner to be determined from Orlando, Florida. Thanks, David. It's time for our Columbia 300 fun fact. Now, I found a fun fan. Her name is Brooke. How are you doing? Good. Are you ready to win that bowling pin? Yeah. But who is your favorite bowler? Tell us. Pete Weber. Pete Weber, a little bit of old school. He got some old soul to you. I like it. Okay, so if you get the answer correct, you're going to walk away with this autographed bowling pin signed by the best bowlers in the world. Or if you get it incorrect, I think I'll let you just take this hat home and give it to your dad, all right? So go ahead and hold that. Here's your question. Which player, is, which player on the telecast is the youngest player to ever win the PBA Tournament of Champions? Is it A, Jesper Svensson, B, Sean Rash, C, Anthony Simonson, or D, Jason Belmonte? A, Jesper Svensson, whatever your last name is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro, uh, whatever his last name is, that is correct. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, for Svensson. He won it when he was 20 years old last year. So congratulations. We're going to let you take both of those home, the bowling pin and the hat, and let your dad have something for Father's Day. Congratulations. All right, Dennis, good job, Brooke. Just say Iceman, right, Randy? That would have been easier. The Iceman. Good. Nice job. Man, got the question right. Gets the pin and the hat. Awesome. Sixth frame now here for Jesper Spenson. Looks for the turkey. Yeah, a very tight match with Jason Belmonte. Tied up with a strike right here. Steel blue eyes, eye on the target. Wow. Are you kidding me? Nine pin stands blasting through the pit. You know, I've watched Jesper bowl a lot on television. I don't think I've ever seen him leave a solid nine. Check this out. There's that nine pin. Takes care of the mark, keeps things very close. Iceman gave that a long stare down afterwards, didn't he? Yeah, well, it, you know, I mean, it, it was a terrible break. Um, it's the equivalent of a solid eight on the right side for a right-hander, and when that happens, it's never a good thing and nothing to be happy about. Two seventy-nine, two fifty-eight win for Jesper against Belmo. Round robin play leading us to step ladder action in Group One. Benson has left that massive ripper seven and now solid nine and that's the only two blemishes on his card. You know for me also David it's how long is Belmonte's bar reaction going to hold up. You know is it going to hold up and Jesper's bar reaction much more predictable. No traffic on that side he's using urethane. But I'll tell you what Belmonte sure loves getting in and curving it. Deep again. Front lane, all 10 down. Feeling comfortable there. Beautiful shot. That's where he crossed over earlier in this match. So up 21. Can expand the lead at 31 pins here, eighth frame. Check out Jesper's laydown area. And Belmonte's laydown area. 
Bel Belmonte is now left of where Jesper is laying his ball down at. <laughs> the righty is left of the lefty. Yeah, it's amazing. All right, Belmo here looks for the turkey eight frame and a 31 pin lead. Left lane. Nice. That ball just split the eight and the nine in half. Two game total pinfall match here to determine the group one winner. And the finalist for our championship show from Orlando. Ball literally split the eight and the nine. Nine pin this time for Jesper Svensson. Absolutely not. Now, Jesper told us pre-match about how his confidence has gone up so much in the last couple of years. Only 22 years old, but how much of a factor is that for a young guy like that to have the confidence you can beat anybody in the world at any time? Well, when you have ability and talent, and then you throw confidence on top of it, it's pretty scary, right? I mean, there's nothing better than bowling on tour with confidence, and you know, you, you knew that your your swing was good. You were throwing it really really well and you were confident that you could win every time you stepped up stepped up on the lanes and and that's a good combination and Jesper's got that Belmonte's got that all eight of our players here this week or for this event have that here's the ninth frame all ten down again for Spence in stays hot keeps things tight in this game but it's about total pinfall over two games Let's see who wins group one. <clears throat> Ninth frame looks for the four bagger. Trying to go up by 21 pins. Back and forth match. Ten pin. Just pin fast. Yeah, there it is. He said it just a little fast on that right lane and it wiggles and it doesn't come off the spot hard enough to get that soft 10 out. There it is. See how late that ball gets there. Almost finishing behind the head pin. out whoa flirts with the channel <laughs> it was close excuse me car excuse me dad can I just grab a re-rack another re-rack here for Belmo second of the match he'll take some time to think things over after just about missed that single pin spare conversion now we have a possibility of a tie. But it's a two game match folks total pins and wouldn't that be cool if we went into game number two all tied up in 258 apiece. And unlike round robin play there is no 50 pin bonus for winning each game so no. it's just straight total pinfall. Here in this group one championship match. Rerack, Belmo. Response. Yeah, it comes back with a filthy shot right there in the 10th frame. The eye on the prize is right here, and it's getting the second hit in the 10th to get him into the 250s. That ball was, uh, I don't know, out about the fourth board, would you say? Continues to move, continues to adjust. I'm not sure that that ball even has a thumb hole in it. Have to play. Yes! Yes! Belmo, comfortable. Okay. 
Great shot. Yep, out, out to about fourth, fifth board. So he's going in like 26, 27 to five. So he's crossing 22 boards going right and then another 12 boards back to get to the pocket. Sharp turn. Strike out in the 10. Oh my gosh. 10 pin almost did it. And a 257 game one score for Belmo. And a two game total pinfall match. Benson could strike out for 258. Look at that left, or excuse me, right arm in front of the ball. Interesting technique. All 10 down. There's one. What a match. We know one thing, it's going to be really close heading into game two. To determine this group one champion. Jesper could have easily shot or, well, I, I don't want to say 300, but he could have easily had the front 10. Remember the solid nine in the sixth frame. And then the ripper seven in the third. For two in the 10. Got it. Needs one more. So that solid nine in the sixth frame cost him 21 pins. He would have had a 21 pin lead going in to game two if he carries that hit. Jesper talked to us pre-match about trusting his eyes and his training. Laser sharp focus, Randy has mentioned with him. On display here today. He's been something. All 10 down, does strike out the 10th. And leads by one pin heading into game two. 258, 257. Total pinfall over two games determines the group one winner. So game two is next for Orlando, Florida, Belmo, Svensson. Ready for game two from Orlando. There, Brian. Hall of Famer Randy Peters alongside. <laughs> oh, what a great match. 258, 257. Total pins for two games. We'll move on to bowl for the title here, Dave. We'll track the running score for you. Almost starts down one pin and the ball were actually wanted three pin stands. That was almost an ugly design. You might see Jason start lofting a little bit to get the ball to push on that left lane and make it go a little bit farther down the lane before it starts to curve. I mean, there was five standing at one time. Nice break there, only leaving the three pin. You know, if Jesper executes like he did in game one with a little bit of pin carry, I see him shooting no less than 270 this game. Mm. That will be tough to beat. Four shot game two for Svensson. Wow. Hammers 10 back into the pit again. 257. That's the lead after game one. Total pinfall match here, game two. Group one winner to be determined. Make our championship show. And the winner on that show takes home a PBA Tour title. Oh. 
Left lane. Yep, threw it bad, got it wide. He knew it as soon as he let go of it, too. See his reaction. Maybe a board or two to the left of where he wanted it. Three pin stands. Takes care of that. Has a mark, but each bowler early here in game two. Not finding the one three pocket perfectly. Couple of spares. That's back to one pin, separating these two superstars. Have we mentioned it's a two-game total pinfall match? Want to make sure it's out there. Right lane, all 10 down for Belmonte. Come on. What, did you see that last shot? Maybe we can get a replay of it, but it, it looked like either a track going down the lane or a vapor trail coming off his ball. Watch this, so cool. Follow it. There it is. Isn't that that is so great? Oh my gosh. Thank you, Blue Oil. It's a great way to watch the sport, no question. Bubble left lane. Right. Hurry, it does. And finds the pocket nicely. Benson now trailing. The only errant shot for Jesper came in the second frame when he went light. Everything else has been flush in the pocket. Third frame down nine. Look out, it's a 7-10. Wow, didn't expect that. Overcompensation maybe from the last shot, but this looks like it was pulled. And it goes right through the nose, leaving the 7-10. Takes the 10, leaves the seven. Thank you. So an open frame. And Jess Stayrooks. Record still stands, 1991, Tucson, Arizona. Last time a 7-10 converted on TV. It has been that long. So things change dramatically, suddenly down by 22 pins. Total pinfall, two game total determines group one. And the winner. So Belmont on the bench gets a big break. Spence in response for the strike. Giving Jason Belmonte, one of the best players of all time, that kind of opening could be a disaster. Three-time player of the year. Never been done four straight years. Jay Tackett won it last season. And Belmo told us pre-event that it took a lot of pressure off. Not having to think about the four straight. Get back to basics for him. Well, that's what great champions do is they take advantage of openings. Right now, Jason Belmonte like looking to take Jesper Svensson to the shed. That's Dave Schroeder, the PBA Tour for a re-rack. Just beautiful motion to watch. And being able to control something like that is pretty unique. You know, I've done a lot of bowling in my life, and I don't think I've ever played the lanes where I was hitting about 27 at the arrows and throwing it out to four and getting it back. I think the only time I did, I did shoot, go 27 
to four was when I was shooting a 10 pin. He didn't go back to the one three pocket. Look at how far left he is. He's deep. Lofting it. And nine pin stands for Belmo here. Well, he's going to a little bit a little bit of loft now in the left lane to try to get the ball to stay on line a bit longer. And when that happens, it stores a little bit more energy and it comes off the end of the spot violently. And that's why he left the solid nine as the ball went right by it. Frame takes care of that single pin spare conversion, no problem. He's up 31. But Spence with two strikes in this game. Now works on a strike here to cut it to 21 pins. Time is now for Jesper. Yeah, it really is. I mean, he can't afford to let Belmonte increase his lead to 40 or 50 with only three frames left. So it's right now. It's striking here in the fifth and sixth frame. Beautiful. Right back in it. Jesper's Fenton began this event as the number four seed. Monty, thanks to all those earnings from 2015 to the midway point of 2017, the number one seed on the eight bowlers here. Six frame looks for the turkey. Has it. 11 pin lead in the two game total pinfall match. Group one winner. Who takes it? Svensson or Belmont, we find out next. It is time to determine a group one winner. Second half, game two. Belmonte has an 11 pin lead. Spencer won the first game 258, 257, but it's about total pinfall over two games. Group one winner will be part of the championship show. Going for a PBA Tour title. Comes down to this. Belmo in the sixth. All ten down. Great touch on that shot there. Belmonte will finish again on the right lane. Okay, can I take another re-rack? Second and final re-rack of the game here for Belmonte. Want to think things over. Take his time. It's going right down to the wire, Randy. He's used every re-rack possible today, it seems like. And Managing his game brilliantly right now, and certainly in the driver's seat, with that opening given to him by Jesper Svensson in the third. Eight majors, third all time, PBA Tour history. The five to win Rookie of the Year and Player of the Year in the same brilliant career. Belmo. Carry. It does carry. He stays hot. 21 pin lead. Another great shot by Belmonte. But you know, we've talked about the unique style of Jesper Svensson. Let's take a look from ground level at his footwork. This is amazing to watch. Both feet come off the ground. They separate going into the slide. Just incredible. Such a unique talent. different but it's effective 10 more down for Svensson and he cuts in the lead again he knows what he has to do and that's he and that's continue to strike continue to strike cut this to a one
pin match and keep the pressure on. That urethane ball digging through the pins. This for five in a row. Eighth frame, every shot matters now. What a finish in store from Orlando. He came out of that one pretty quick, like he really liked it. And that was another great shot by Jesper Svensson. And the young man keeps the pressure <clears throat> on the three-time player of the year, Jason Belmonte. Watch this. It's good stuff. He's rolling red hot. Eighth now for Belmo. Looks for the turkey. And to expand the lead back to 11 pins in this neck-and-neck neck. match from Orlando. We think... Back through the pre-shot routine. Pretty uncommon balk from Belmo. You've seen the re-racks. Not that so far. Frame. All 10 down. Just incredible to watch these two athletes with an extraordinary system of mind and body control, being able to get their bodies to perform at this level and to do what they can do. Watch how far left the drift. The lay down is just two boards to the inside of the left gutter. Concentration powers bordering on obsession. Foundation frame. Carry on. Oh, come Nine pin. on. He thought he had no. it. Oh. That's our Barbers oh. Hall. Close shave of the day replay, Randy. Yeah, this is a second solid nine pin on the left lane, and this is another great shot. Watch the ball go right by it. You don't see that happen with him very often, and you would think he would leave more of those, but he's so good at making his ball come off the edge of the pattern nice and smooth. It's a big non-strike. Uh, potentially, oh, I don't like you, no. potentially oh. could cost him a chance at winning this entire event. His max score now, 247, excuse me, 248. All right. Yes, for Svensson's max score 257. In this game, that's about total pinfall. Right now, Jesper steps up for a five bagger, yep, yep, looks yep. for six in a row. And a chance to even things up here. Dallas stretch run. Remember, Jesper beat him by a pin, 258, 257, game one. To tie it up right here. Frame for half a dozen in a row. Oh, yeah. Oh. Smashes through the rack. Shrapnel everywhere. All even. That urethane bowling ball just absolutely can opener on the rack here. Four pin goes to the sidewall and slaps the seven silly. Two strikes and just staying on the lane. We'll shut out Belmo on the bench here. So all the pressure on our number four seed in this event entering Orlando and the PBA Tour Finals. Tries here for the first. No, no, no. and a split. Six, eight. 
Didn't expect that, and neither did Jesper. He liked this, and it just grabbed a little bit and hooked more down lane, leaving the 6-8 split. To have any chance, he has to make this. What a turn of events for Svensson, who could double to shut out Belmonte and now faces a very tough split. Oh. And he whiffs and will not convert and loses more count. And Belmonte is sitting pretty to win group one now. We gave it a great run at that split. Belmonte just needs good count. Eight on the first ball. Actually, seven on the first ball. Uh, seven, ten. How about eight? <laughs> he just got eight on the first ball. That's a winner. Remember. He needed eight because of the one pin Jesper had going in, but I'll tell you what, the last two frames for Belmonte were incredible. Solid nine and then a pocket 7-10, and he's gonna win. He's gonna bolt for the title. We'll take the 10 pin only. That's gonna be enough. 225, 221 to win group one. It was not easy. But Jason Belmonte will appear in the championship show in Orlando with a chance to take home a PBA Tour title. What a battle with Svensson. Belmonte a winner. He'll talk to Randy when we return. We're married, and as professional golfers, we're very competitive. But only on the golf course. 72 seconds. How long can you hold your breath? No competing at home. Booyah. That's our rule. Pure Silk and Barbasol. Proud supporters of professional golf and friendly competition everywhere. Loser takes out the trash. <laughs> Try new Pure Silk and Barbasol razors. Available now nationwide. All right, let's take a look at our Grand Casino Road to the Championship. Jason Belmonte, match number one. He takes down Anthony Simonson, 262 to 215. Match number two against Sean Rash. Again, it was all Belmonte, 255, 221 winner. And then in match number three, our two game total pin matchup. Game one, what a great match. 258, 257, Belmonte down by just a stick going in to the last game. Yes, for Spenson gets up in the 10th frame, or in the 9th frame, he strikes. He can shut out Belmonte with a strike in the 10th and 11th. Instead, it's a 6-8 split. Belmonte goes stone 9 in the 9th. Jason needs count in the 10th to advance. It's a pocket 7-10, but it's enough. Jason Belmonte, your winner. And here I am with the guy that made it uh, very, very dramatic coming down the stretcher. A couple of solid 9s on the left lane. And all of a sudden now it's up to Jesper Svensson. What were you thinking about when you were sitting on the bench watching Jesper? Yeah, I mean, Jesper coming down the stretch is uh, phenomenal. And when he likes to do what he's doing, uh, he's, he's always going to throw a pretty good shot. So when he struck in the ninth, I was getting ready to untie my shoes. I thought that was going to be over. But um, bowling's a funny game. You know, you just one shot here or there, a pin just misses another pin, and you still have a chance. And then luckily for me, he missed them all. And um, you know my 7-10 wasn't that uh, I mean, it was it wasn't that bad at that time. You know we talked before the the start of the telecast, and I asked you if you were going to stay with urethane, and you said you were. What changed your mind? Well, I felt like urethane was going to give me a 220 to, to 230 reaction. When I came out here for the practice, I felt like I could bowl higher with reactive, and I knew that my opponents were going to throw reactive. So that meant, you know what, I'm going to have to out bowl them and score higher and I wasn't too confident I was going to bowl the big games with the urethane. So I went with the reactives. The only thing I was a little bit concerned about was being forced too far left, um, you know, too quickly. But luckily for me, 
you know, that phase two just rolled really nice all the way through the pins for every game. Yeah, great job. Congratulations, man. You managed your game brilliantly today. Way to go. Thank you very much. Cheers. The what a match between Belmonte and Svensson. 482, 479 Belmo. Top seed in this event does take it, and he'll go to the championship show. Now for Randy Peterson, the entire crew.